Howdy. Uh, thank you all for coming back to this uh, second post-coach firing press conference, uh, which is an addendum to the original post-coach firing press conference from the other day. Uh, you see, what happened was it was one of those classic things where, well, you know, when you're holding a post-coach firing press conference and you do it and you, you know, you say all the right stuff about, you know, building towards the future and how we're determined to get this right and, the, you know, the fans... The fans deserve better, yada, yada. And then you're on your way home and you're like, oh man, I forgot to fire some people. I forgot a few things. Well, this is one of those deals. (laughs) So I just want to tie up a couple of loose ends here. Everything I said in the first post-coach fire and press conference uh, stands. That all still holds true. Uh, Just in case you weren't here, um, I said uh, firing Hugh Jackson was a really tough decision. He did some really good things here. Uh, under his leadership, you know, we uh, we participated in many, many football games, uh, all of which he was on time for, and which is so important. Punctuality is such an important quality, you know. Uh, Hugh did not win many games while he was here, but he was never late to lose. Uh, but the bottom line is, he had to go. Uh, you see, as I said, uh, we just had too much internal discord in the organization. And you just can't have that kind of chaos and negative energy around a young, impressionable team, you know, which is why I did not even wait for the bye week to fire both my head coach and offensive coordinator before immediately turning the team over to the extremely volatile architect of Bounty Gate, uh, Greg Williams, who I believe is exactly the steady hand we need during these turbulent times. Now, to replace Todd Haley at uh, offensive coordinator, I have tapped the very capable and extremely already under contract running backs coach, um, whose name, of course, is. Hold on, I've got it here. His name is. Uh, there it is. Oh, that's a flyer for vinyl siding. Hold on. There it is. Uh, offensive coordinator Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens. Sounds like a child made it up. (laughs) Anyways, uh, he's going to be dynamite. Um, We're expecting big things from Freddie Kitchens. Buckle up, National Football League, because there is a new offensive sheriff in town, and his name is Freddie Kitchens. So, uh, I figured as long as we were cleaning house here, I might as well use this opportunity to clear some more brush um, from not only the Browns organization, but also its fledgling parasitic satellite industry of podcasts with that in mind i am announcing here today that i have decided to fire the hosts of my least favorite cleveland browns podcast browns friday fumble which i am told is supposed to be a humorous program but it just sounds like a couple of lonely polecats cowder walling at the moon to me um, so i'm gonna have to let these boys go uh these guys second i got their names here freddie kitchen nope that's from before yeah david and dylan um yeah they're done and as a cost-saving measure i've decided to find their replacements internally and double dip so to speak so with that in mind it is my great pleasure to introduce you to the new hosts greg williams and freddie kitchens Hello, hello, hello. This is your Browns Friday Fumble. Well, I'll put it in your picture set. Why don't you get it out your tight end? No, no. All right. Now, cut, cut the fucking music, first of all. See, the number of copyright complaints I've been told. Uh, this stops now. Uh, what do you think this is? WMJI? Magic 105.7? Moondog Coronation Ball? I don't think so. And the fumble is one that we forced because that is an emphasis on this football team. We force fumbles. We force takeaways, and we force our will on the opponent of this football team. Anyway, sorry for that. My name is Greg Williams. As you just heard a moment ago, I'm the new host of the Friday Fumble. With me is my new offensive coordinator, Freddie Kitchens. How are you, Freddie? I'm pretty good there, Mr. Williams. Can I uh, offer you a beverage? If I wanted a beverage, 
I'd stop by a 7-Eleven. But uh, anyways, first off, I want to say first that uh, uh, we greatly respect Dave and Dylan as Indeed. podcast hosts. Indeed. They've been excellent. But moving forward, we're not going to talk about that anymore. Uh, this, we're going to talk about the future of this podcast, well, not today. the past. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Freddie, do you listen to a lot of podcasts? Well, sometimes, yes. I, I like to catch a wait, wait, don't tell me on the on the NPR app every now and then. Well, you know, I do too. Uh, I've been a big fan of Joe Rogan since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Adam Carolla, the godfather, uh, oh. throwing shade. I love them. And you know what? I fucking love the McElroy brothers. So this podcast business, right up my alley. I was with Dave Weiner in 2007 when he invented podcasting. I've studied every podcaster in the business. Jesse Thorne, Scott Ackerman, Paul F. Tompkins. I know what I'm doing. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, um, on long car trips, I'll listen to a good book on tape sometimes. Well, that's good, Freddie. That's good. That's kind of like a podcast, and I'll accept that. Yeah, it breaks it up. Shit! Okay, now let's see what we do here on this podcast. Uh, okay, looks like the first thing... Sorry, we are just learning on the go today. Uh, first thing we're going to do is do a recap of the game, last week's game against Pittsburgh football. Okay, Freddie, let's cue it up. All right, well, uh, well, I do, I do want to offer a bit of insight into the offensive strategy on this one. I feel like... Todd uh, has probably come under some undue criticism over the past week for the inability to convert some solid drives early. Well, that that strategy from Todd, I do believe, uh, has always been to get Hugh fired. Uh, I mean, we we have all the weapons. We need to make some 10-yard crossing route plays on third and long. But you'll notice if you watch the tape, Todd typically went in, went with a check down, weak side screen, or some other ill-advised draw play where two rookies uh, try to read a professional footballing defensive structure. You know, Freddie, I suspect as much. I wasn't about to say anything, though. My job was to do my job, and I did my job like a job doer. So, you know what, that's what my best friend and colleague and compatriot Bill Belichick always said, and he is a close personal friend of mine as well as a coaching equal to mine. He says to do your job. Indeed. So all right, uh, I was thinking maybe, uh, maybe uh, why don't we just you know we got a lot of work to do in preparation this week. Yes, that is one thing, listeners. You will have to note that we now that we have multiple roles here as well as podcasters, uh, we have to do, uh, we have to do our jobs at the same time while we're doing this podcast. You yeah, see, right. so we're just going to start breaking down some game film. Now this might get technical for y'all. But uh, we're going to do it here. And uh, so if you want to go to www.nfl.com slash highlights, you can find these highlights and you can follow along if you'd like. But we're just going to – it might get a little technical with you. So first we're going to just break down this film. Yep. There he is, yep. Right there in that shotgun set. Yep. Got that little play to do. He's pretty fast. You know, I like like that dude, Johnson. Yeah, he's fast. He – Reminds me of a couple of my compadres from um, Alabama Crimson Tide days. That was a good play by Ratley. I don't know why he went out of bounds. He should have kept running inbounds. He would have gotten more yards. You know, that is one thing. As a running back coach, I uh, oftentimes I'll pull a man aside and I'll, and I'll tell him, that hey. That play just didn't go anywhere. I think that was one of the Todd Haley Hugh plays. Well, you'll see that it did bring up fourth down there. So Yeah, so then we kick the field goal. Who's was- the, You remember that asshole's name who's the kicker? I don't even remember. He's been here like two minutes. Yeah, well, I don't even know. He's from like South Africa or something. I don't understand Maybe it. Maybe kicked down there or something. I don't know. Ooh, that they've boy. Got, they've got this gentleman that returns punts who's very fast. Switzer, yeah, I remember him. He was pretty good. Hey, That's there you go. Take away. There's your take away. Take away. There. Take, away. take Positive away. Positive turnover. Take away. Yep. That's now I think was. we gotta slow this this film down a little bit here, Greg. I uh, don't I don't really have the ability. They haven't shown me how to use the equipment yet, so I'm just doing what I'm doing. So you saw, um, which is my job. Do your job. Well, you see, my boy's doing his job right there. That uh, that Nick Chubb boy nearly intercepted. I don't know why he did that. Well, I, you know what? I'll tell you what. That also brought up fourth down. I'm gonna tell you that much, and you'll see that 
the receiver was running a different route than uh, I believe that That's Baker a clever was throwing tactic. to. That's a clever tactic. Well, unfortunately, did too bu- too good of a job, I believe. That's a sack. Not a takeaway, but still a sack. You know, uh, shotgun, shotgun set up there again. Oh, yeah, that's that, a pirouette. That was a good that, play by uh, six. Just a couple of, just a couple of ballerina prances out there, pulling out wide. Well, I don't know why they put it in here twice. Or, well, I mean, gonna, it's already the game film. I, can I just tell you, I just am gonna enjoy working with this young man. Yeah, he's a fine young man. He has respect for the game. Oh, here's where we well, miss it. Are we well, allowed we to fire need... this kid? Am I allowed to fire this kid? Well, I, I think you ought to check with John on that one. Boy, should have been a takeaway on that, that ben, one. That Ben Roethlisberger, he... he's old, huh? He's been in the league quite a while. He's been in the league nearly as long as I have, and I've been in the league 58 years. Well, that's true. I mean, uh, this fella, uh, he started throwing the ball in college right after I did. Uh, you know what? I can't watch this anymore. I, uh, I'm just going to start to get upset. The past is the past. Right. Uh, we I live th- in today, I we, think. We need to live in today. Uh, so let's, you know what? I can't do it anymore. So. Shit! Anyway, let's move on. We've got, you know what? It's time for some Browns news. This is what they do next. They don't usually do film study. We had to do a quick film study. I'm sorry, podcast listeners, but we have a lot to do, which is our job. Put together the game plan. And you got like three jerseys to make. So anyway, Browns news. You already know the big goddamn news. Freddie and I are here. You know, been a few other things going on. A few former members of this team who no longer with this team that are talking to the media. And I don't really want to get into it. You know, I don't. But, I mean, if you need to come up with excuses so you can sleep at night, then do that. But me, I coach football, not checkers, not chess, not backgammon, not connect four, not sorry, not monopoly, not parcheesy, not shoots and ladders, not hungry, hungry hippos. I mean, I study the game. I have a file on every player in the NFL, in college, in the CFL, the XFL. I keep tabs on everyone every day. I get little updates on my phone every day about all of these people. So if you need to make excuses, make them. But I am going to do my job. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, you know, I I stepped in. I mean, I came up in this. I came up in this system. Yes. I didn't create this system, but this is a system that I did come up in. Shit. Uh, and I do believe that. Uh, Right now we got to move on to the Caduce Kindness Corner. I don't know if you knew now, about yes, that. Yes, I didn't know about it. At, look, but but look at that here. These boys had somehow found a way to contact Devin Caduce. They're calling him, giving him some hippy dippy mocha chocolate, crystal magic healing essential oils, hot yoga type bullshit to motivate my team. Well, you know what? I did like the kid. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. He did cut the ponytail. He worked his ass off, played with the bum shoulder. So I guess, you know what? Let's roll. Let's roll it. It's my favorite time. You're listening to the Browns Friday Fumble, and this is Devin Kajus with this week's Kajus Kindness Corner. With you guys dealing with big changes in your life, I feel like the world is getting shook up right now. The biggest thing I can tell you is be consistent. Everything is like the stock market, and it doesn't mean like you're going to crash. It doesn't mean you're going to explode and go up either. I just mean the fact that it goes up and down. Things are not always going to go smooth, but being consistent and diligent will help you persevere. So with the big changes, take them. Don't be afraid. Freaking jump off that cliff with a parachute, and that's called a leap of faith, and know that the safety net's at the bottom. Be consistent. Be consistent and take the chance. Anyways, back to you, Dave and Dylan. See you guys next week. Shit. Well, I guess we got to talk about this head coaching bracket. Uh, uh, yes, we do. There's been a Twitter poll going on, going on, going on the Twitter, which I'm not a part of. I do not subscribe to that. I am podcast not. all the time, and that's it. Mm-hmm. 
Well, y'all know the deal here. Uh, Dave and Dylan started out with a list of potential head coach head coach candidates for uh, Greg's job here. That's my job, and I do my job. Some some notable standouts from that list uh, early on were John Hamm, fine actor. Pete Davidson, I don't even know who that is. No, I don't. Is it son of Harley Davidson? And and Usher. I do, now, I is that an Usher fan. at the stadium? N- no, sir. That is a vaunted R&B artist from the 90s and early 2000s. Well, anywho, came down to a semifinal round, Robin play in situation for the final uh, between five candidates. Now, uh, how the hell do you have a bracket and end up with five candidates? What the hell were these boys doing? It's like they don't even know anything about mathematics. And mathematics used to be my job, and I did my job. So right at the top of the bracket there, Greg, you have uh, Ohio State running back, former uh, un-Ohio State running back. Yes, from un-Ohio State University. Uh, And clear fan favorite, Maurice Claret. He was a very, very big vote getter, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Had some uh, trouble there at the end of his school career. I don't recall that. He was a reformed man. I think he's turning Who around. took responsibility in his life. Indeed. No excuses there. None. Uh, second was your mom. Mm-hmm. Not sure if that was supposed to be a joke or... Uh, I'm not quite sure about that. I'm just going to move on before I get mad. Oh, I think uh, former Miami Sharks head coach Tony D'Amato. Now, I coached against Tony D'Amato when I was with the Dallas Knights. And uh, I coached against him. I had a file on him. Had a file on everyone in that league as well. He is a very, very good coach. Very, very good motivator of men in the locker room. Uh, his tactics are a little bit stale, a little bit old, but he is all about motivating men to do great things. So that's a good candidate. Now, I believe you also had an offer on a table from the Sharks. I did, and they ended up going with Nick Crozier, who did mm. not survive this bracket. Indeed. Following uh, closely on the heels on Tony D'Amato was uh, Tywin Lannister. Everyone's All right, from favorite, the Game of Thrones. Everyone's favorite patriarch. And uh, finally, uh, a respectable candidate, uh, AutoZone CEO, William C. Rhodes III. Now, he is who I am rooting for, except I'm rooting for no one, because this is my job. So, just hands off my job, and I'm going to do my job. So, again, I don't know how they managed to get five different seeds into the semifinals. Uh, these boys do not know what the hell they are doing. So... We decided to end it right where it stood as soon as we got the call from upstairs. And the winner is Greg Williams with offensive coordinator Freda Kitchens. So deal with that. Shit! All right, looks like it's time to uh know your foe. Yes. So it looks like we are playing the Chiefs, and it looks like a lot of this work seems to have been done. They must have been really working hard like they yeah. were going to keep doing this podcast when they this did this so this is all, is all written out on this sheet of paper here S- well it saves us a lot of scouting work yeah so uh the chiefs uh they have done some roster work here so let's get the local boys out of the way first from cleveland ohio right you've got the star of fraser travis kelsey grammar No, we're we're just reading this off paper. So. so yeah, don't if we laugh, it, it's because we didn't even do this. We're, we're just reading it. So glazed donut, Krispy Kreme hunt. Former NFL left guard Cam Irving. Last action hero M- Mitchell Schwarzenegger. Now is that that's supposed to be? I think that's a play on words on Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger, but I don't know. Hmm. Running back, my brother Damian Williams and my other brother Daryl Williams. Who folks like Bob Newhart. Did you know Bob Newhart? I did coach against Bob Newhart. I had a sitcom that went up against him, and I studied Bob Newhart. I, he was a close personal con- confidant. Uh, Chad Henney tattoo. Uh, you got quarterback Patrick Mahomes the clown. Well, Mahomes don't play that. That is true. Now, did you get your McAfee updated, Greg? Because uh, they got Spencer Malware coming in. That is rough, and I have to talk to John about that because <laughs> I did. 
I'm still using this uh, compact Presario mm. that they gave me two years ago, so mm-hmm. i got to deal with that anyway. Uh, at center, antiquated communications method, Mitch Morris Code. Well, that brought our boys home from the big war. I don't know what's funny about that. It's kind of a real somber comment there, Freddie. I think you'll like this one, Greg. Son of Miles Garrett, left tackle Eric Fisher. I'll I'll tell you what, it is by the end of that game going to be that. Uh, You got defensive back and elusive Pokemon, Charvarius Ward. (laughs) That one's funny. Founder of Zombo.com, Frank Zombo. You can do anything you want at Zombo.com. The only limit is yourself, and you do your job. You got high-end retailer Ben Neiman Marcus. Mm. A lot of money getting spent up in Neiman Marcus coming up soon. My ex-wife, I'll tell you that much. You got typical Florida man Orlando scam dick. I don't know what's funny about that. I don't know either. Freshly picked Eric Berries, straight from the Nate Orchard. Uh, presented without, it says, presented without comment, Harrison Butker. No comment on that one. You've got cartoon private, Alan Beetle Bailey. And Chris Jones. All right, guys, this is another thing here that uh, it says we have to do something about Baker Mayfield, Baker's dozen, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? I put an end to it. Baker has more important things to do like his job, okay? So typically what would happen here is Baker Mayfield would send a list of items based on the concept of a baker's dozen, which is 12 donuts plus an extra bonus donut. And in this case, he would provide a list of six items on a given topic based on his number, his jersey number, and his name around the office is six. It's what we call him. But I've put a stop to it. He has a job to do as quarterback of this team, and that is not writing lists for the podcasting department of the Cleveland Browns. So we might, someone might question my ethics in doing this. I contacted Dave and Dylan, okay, and I had them write up this list of six things to pre- you know what I want to give people second chances, and I want them to know what they've done wrong, and examine it so they can learn and grow as men. Well, we respect the hell out of Dave and Dylan. Yes, I would say that. We do respect the hell out of Dave and Dylan. So what I did is I assigned them a task and said, Dave and Dylan, you tell me why you got fired. Give me your six reasons, because Baker Mayfield's number is six, and we're going to keep that part, but why did you get fired? Let's learn and grow. So this is straight out of their mouths, but we're going to read it here. Well, number six, it says right here, uh, Greg, it says, uh, didn't have quality podcasting equipment. Okay. That's one. That sounds a little bit like an excuse, but let's, okay. It says number five, they were forced to have other people write scripts for them. It's like they didn't have control. Uh, Getting a little suspicious here. At number four, uh, didn't have budget for premium intro selection music. Huh. That sounds a bit of like an excuse to me, but that's... Yeah. Uh, it says here, uh, number three, Sasha Brown traded away their most popular host, Yazin. Now, keep in mind, I have great respect for Dave and Dylan, but uh, however, these respond well. I'll keep these to myself. Keep, yeah. Let's. Uh, we don't uh, want to pontificate on that. Number two, uh, internal discord uh, between Dave and Dylan. Interesting. And the number one reason that Dave and Dylan got fired by their own admission is analytics. Shit! All right, everybody. Of course, you know. We are not allowed by law, by law to make predictions about this game. We are members of the team. We're not allowed to make predictions because what if we were trying to fix the game or something like that and you take it off to Vegas and we've done told you to score. We can't do that. But we're allowed to hint at a few things. So, Freddie, what would you like to tell our podcast listeners 
about this football game? Well, I can tell them straight out of the straight out the gate. I'm not going to be coming in there with the. Uh, I don't need to implement the get Hugh fired playbook no more. So, uh, so a lot of those, uh, a lot of those eight yard matchups and those uh, six yard go get ems, we're gonna just pull those out the pl- uh, out the rotation just immediately. Maybe get Nick Chubb involved uh, with a Duke Johnson set every once in a while. Uh, have him up close, right up there, and the, you know, I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm just, I'm saying too much at this point. You know, and, uh, I, this does come out before the game, and I wouldn't really want to tip our hands to the Chiefs. Right. So maybe you wrap it up here. Okay. Okay. So what's your fi- – oh, well, not allowed to give a final evaluation. I'm going to say that the defense is going to earn themselves a few Charleston chews out there this week because they're going to put a hurting on them Chiefs. I cannot tell you specifically how big of a hurting – they're going to put, but it's going to be a big hurting because everyone is going to do their jobs. They're going to do their responsibility jobs, and it's all going to come down to this. This is a game of football, and I'm not going to list the board games again, but you know what games this isn't. This isn't soccer. This isn't baseball. This isn't volleyball. This isn't tennis. This isn't basketball. This is not water polo or horse polo. It's not ice hockey nor field hockey. This is not the game that the Incas played where they tried to get the ball through the vertically mounted hoops. It is not that game. What is that, whirly ball? That's a different game that it is not. So this is a game of football coming up. So I'm going to ask my men, I'm going to say that word again and emphasize it again, men, to do their jobs, next man up, do their jobs, and be the next man up to do their job. Okay, so this is a game of football. Okay, we're not talking about a sort of hobby like photography or pottery or paper mache crafts or stained glass designs or sewing or gardening or bonsai trees. This this is not a hobby. This is a sport of football played by men. Not played by dogs or cats or horses or cows or pigs or giraffes or rhinoceroses. And I've studied animals. I've studied all the animals in respect to football and a, you know what? A giraffe is a close personal friend of mine. And he, while having a long neck to evaluate the defense, does not have the arm strength to launch the field. I thought for a while that a giraffe would be the optimal football quarterback. But it cannot throw the football because all four of its legs are in contact with the ground. So, Freddie, you're not really saying much. What do you think about animals playing the sport of football? Because I don't think they can do it. Well, I just, I just think that uh, we, we are not changing the system. It's a system I came up in. This is a system I know. Um, you know, I put you in the pistol set. Well, you know, get it out to your tight end. You got. I was offered a job by three different zoos because of my extensive knowledge of animals. One of the zoos said, don't even interview. We'll give you the zookeeper job right now. That's how impressive my animal career is. You do know animals. So, I just, this is a game of football. So, I'm going to ask my men to do their job and win this game of football. Just for a record, I did not interview for any zookeeper positions. Shit! All right, everybody. The, thank you for listening this week. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it is at Democo. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dylan B. Price. If you want to follow us in a combined fashion and follow the coaching search, you can follow us at Friday Fumble. Thank you very much to Devin Kajust, as always. Love you, Devin. Big thanks to Mike Polk for helping us out. And you have been listening to the Browns Friday Fumble. Friday Fumble.